Hey everybody, it's Alex Cameron here, and today I'm gonna to be talking through the people management window in DaVinci Resolve. It's a little bit of a overlooked feature, I feel, in DaVinci Resolve, but it's incredibly powerful, especially if you're doing a lot of dialogue scenes where they've got people in the shots and you want to quickly isolate all these different people to work on them in different ways, whether it to be grouping them for color grading or just generally finding them all and sort of organizing all of their media. Perhaps their media was shot on a different day and you want to categorize it slightly differently, or perhaps you want to you know, give it a different tag or something like that. So lots of powerful things that you can do and the people window is one of these things. So let's dive in and show you how this works. So I'm in the media page here in DaVinci Resolve and We've got a number of clips in our media pool already that we brought in. All this footage is courtesy of Blackmagic Design, so thank you very much for allowing me to use this footage to show you this feature. So we've got these number of these different shots, and what we, we can see is there's different people throughout all of these different shots, and we want to essentially analyze these for their different people. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select them all, we're gonna right click, and we're going to go analyze clips for people. And DaVinci Resolve will go off and do its thing, and then Sure enough, it's gonna group all these faces together. And we get what's called the people management window pop up, which is right here. What you can see is originally it's found people, and these are the people that it's found, and there's person one, person two, and you can see how all these different people sort of break down and how it's grouped them together. Okay, so what we can also see is that there's been some slight confusion along here, and we're gonna to have to fix that. So let's go through and fix that as we go. So if person one, absolutely no problem at all, we can say, so lady one, that's fine. Obviously, you'd give them a proper name in real life. Don't call them Lady One. So we've got this chap here, who is so person two, person three, person four. So we'll do him next. So one, two, three. So this chap here, and we'll call him Man One. This lady here, we can check she is Lady Two, and so on and so forth. And two. This obviously will come back to. He's a bit of an anomaly. Okay. So now they're all separated. Actually, if we dive in to each of these people, we can see how they're broken up, which is really cool. And that's even quite impressive to see that that's picked him up on the side. So this is using the neural engine of DaVinci Resolve to do this. Person six, obviously, is the, the anomaly that we came back to. And as you can see, this little red area denotes the area that it's picked up as a person, which is pretty impressive if you ask me, because that's a person for sure, but it's on his shirt. So it's not someone that we need to worry about particularly. So in this case, we can actually just discard that particular person. So let's go to person six, and we can say not person six, we can just remove. So now that person is now no longer there. So we've removed that one, which is an anomaly. Also, we've got other people here. So what it's done here in other people is it's, you can see it's found this particular clip and said this is another person. And it's found this master one is also another person. Now, that's not technically true because in this case, it's found our lady here and it's found our lady here. And if we click into her, you can see that it's found her in this instance, but in this instance, it feels like it's another person. Now, what we could do is if that was a secondary cut and a, a different cut and a person that we can tag her as the right person. So I think in this case, it was lady three. So let's go to her and we can go tag as lady three and hit okay. This one, we're not gonna worry about. We're just gonna leave as it was, okay? So coming back to people, you can see now that if I jump into lady three, it's tagged her and everybody is tagged appropriately. Brilliant, really, really helpful. And then what's so powerful about this is that if we close out of this window here, incidentally, if you ever want to get back to it, you go up to workspace and then come down to people and then click and it appears. So this has now sort of been analyzed. And what's great here is if we come down to our smart bins here, oops, grab those, and you can see timelines, and then we've got some other smart bins. Now, these are not always all on by default. If you come up to DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, and then User, and then Editing, you can actually choose your automatic smart bins here. Now, you can turn these ones off, or you can decide to have them turned back on. And I find certainly keywords and scene metadata really important. And as I say, of late, the people metadata bin is really useful for me. So I'm just gonna cancel out of that. And the reason being is that when I come into people now, we've got obviously all of these people sorted out. I can disclose that and I can quickly filter. I only want to look at, for example, let's have a go, at lady one or man one, lady two, man two, lady three, lady four, et cetera. So I can very quickly filter all my shots of only a particular person. Now, obviously one of the things you may have noticed is that it seems to have created these other bins for person one, four, three, five, six, and so on, uh, all these other ones here. Now, I believe this is still part of a bug and it shouldn't actually be the case because obviously as you saw in our people window, when I went back to it, they've we've, we've refined that and these people are no longer there. Those, those sort of, it, default ones that they create with they created. So these default ones need to be removed and currently there's no way to actually 
remove those, unfortunately. So you have to sort of brush past that for the time being. But again, you've got the sort of point here. Lady one, man one. Now, man one, for example, would be an interesting scenario because we've got three shots of this particular man. It's very likely that his shot in this instance is going to be done at a, you know, a similar sort of scene, maybe similar lighting, maybe similar from a grading point of view. And we're going to want to grab all of those perhaps and then create a group in, in some regard. Now, we can either just sort of grab them and then we could change the metadata to help it sort of make us do that grouping easier later. We could, of course, flag this particular clip in a particular way so that we now that know that all his clips are flagged in a particular way and we can sort of isolate him later by that. Or what's really cool is if I come to the edit page quickly and drop him onto a timeline, and in fact, what I'll do is rather than filter by, by these people, I'll just come back to everybody and drop everybody else onto a timeline. In fact, let me just back up a step grab everybody, bring them down to the timeline and just pop them there for now. So I've got everything onto the timeline and I know I'm gonna to wanna to go through and grade all of this in some part, our film's finished and we're just gonna to go to the grading side of things. Now, when it comes to grading, it's very much helpful to speed up your workflow by being able to quickly isolate and work on the shots that all are quite similar. So like I said to you, grouping things together. Now, of course, I have flagged them in this case, but if I wanted to, I could group them for a number of different ways. So let's say I just wanted to look at the clips of the guy. So we could go up here and we could come down to obviously the, the flag that we put earlier and flag him off. And now we know that he is grouped up and we can just quickly work on his grade together. Or if you noticed up here under the clips again, we come back, we come to people. Now I'm gonna to have to remember which guy this is, lady is a man one. There we go. So actually, let me refresh that. So we've got all of them back and we come back and we go to people, man one, bang. And we very quickly isolated him ready for grading. So we can then at this point, select it, add it to a group, maybe say man one, hit okay. Now he's been grouped up. Now that we've got a group, we have access to the additional node tree structures here of the pre and post clip. So let's go to the pre clip and you might decide that there's a, a, a general change we need to make. Maybe the shots uh, not warm enough or whatever, and we're just gonna warm it up or cool it down. Well, let's just warm it up ridiculously. And you notice that obviously all of the clips have been graded in one go. Super fast, very efficient. We've made all of our clips the right color, the right adjustment. We've affected everything in one go. And we did that by helping filter by setting up the people management window correctly. So I hope this has been useful, guys. I find it certainly very useful when we're doing lots of uh, big shoots and we're trying to filter out different people to work on them in different ways. It's, as I say, something that's overlooked quite a lot in Resolve. So, you know, if you have enjoyed this, I'd be very grateful for any likes. And if you have interest in learning more about DaVinci Resolve and how it can help you in the future, do also hit the subscription button. And I'm very grateful for anybody who joins our little family here. Other than that, I've been Alex Cameron for Depict. Thank you ever so much indeed, guys. And we will see you in the very next video. Bye for now.